Welcome to a new Draw My Life video. When you think of dragons, you probably think of a huge winged reptile with horns and fire breath. A creature of extraordinary wisdom that holds enormous quantities of gold under its claws, lives in a dark cave, and swallows people. But this is only one of the infinite representation of this magnificent being. Dragons are fantastic creatures that appear in the mythology of almost every culture on the planet. In the West, we can already find dragons in ancient Greece. The word dragon comes from the Greek word dracon. This word derives from a verb meaning to stare and refers to the hypnotic gaze of snakes. Dragons in this culture were just that, snakes, but gigantic. Some of the best known are the dragons of Colchis, Garden of the Golden Fleece. There was also the Hydra of Lerna, the water serpent with nine heads that Hercules defeated in one of his twelve labors. Or Leiden, with one hundred heads and whose life was taken away by Atlas, the famous titan that holds heaven and earth. In German mythology, we find the dragon Nidhug, who feeds on Yggdrasil, the tree of life, whose branches and roots hold the world together. Or Fafnir, the dragon who confronts the hero Siegfried in the Song of the Nibelungs. In Christian tradition, the image of the dragons was associated with evil. This is why we can find dragons in Christian symbolism and art. The legend of Saint George and the dragon symbolizes the victory of good over evil, the triumph of faith over heresy and sin. In the Middle Ages, the symbol of the dragon evolved, and although it was still linked to evil, it also represented power, cunning, and knowledge. They became fierce guardians. It is here that the first legends and songs of heroes that save princesses from dragons begin to appear. But the stereotype of the dragon as a malicious creature is not shared throughout the world, as the dragon figure in Eastern cultures is very different from those in the West. In cultures like China or Japan, dragons are benevolent creatures, a symbol of good luck. They are forces of nature and the universe. The representation of these dragons is also very different from that of their Western counterparts. Dragons are beings that have features of other animals, such as lobster eyes, deer horns, camel nose, dog nose, catfish whiskers, lion mane, snake body, fish scales, and eagle claws. These dragons don't breathe fire, and they fly magically because they don't have wings. In Chinese culture, dragons, also known as long, are related to water. It is believed that they are guardians of rivers and seas and bring rain. They also possess supernatural powers such as the ability to become a silkworm, become invisible, or shine in the dark. Dragons have been the official emblem of the Chinese imperial family for centuries. In Japan, unlike in China, dragons, also known as Ryu, represent wisdom and sometimes grant wishes. From Smog in The Hobbit to Shang Long in Dragon Ball, the figure of the dragon is still present in modern culture and fiction. These are no longer dragons that meet all the stereotypes of the traditional dragon, but have been revised to give us a new and fresh version of them. You can find some of these dragons in Christopher Paulini's book series The Inheritance, in Rachel Hartman's Serafina, or in Michael Landis' cult work The Never-Ending Story. And what about little Norbert, Hagrid's dragon in Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone? or the adorable Night Fury in How to Train Your Dragon. Nor can we forget Dragon, Viserion, and Rhaegar, the dragons of Daenerys Targaryen in the HBO series Game of Thrones, which seems to have brought these fascinating creatures back into the spotlight. Don't be afraid, hang on tight and get on the back of a dragon, because dragons still have a long way to go. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it, and if you want to see more Draw My Life videos, subscribe to our channel. See you in the next episode!